Good morning. All right, so um, I do have this one um, example we need to finish up in section 10.1 and then we'll move on to 10.2 today. Um, a couple of things, I think yesterday I might have misspoken and said the wrong date for the um, your test is not due until after the weekend, um, so you've got till Monday at midnight to get that done. Um, but that is the chapter four test on logarithms and exponential functions. Um, that stuff is due on Monday. Um, let me know if you have any questions or have any issues uploading, anything like that. Um, but you do have the weekend to get that done. Um, just so you know, um, I have come up with somewhat of a solution for the final exam. Um, I'm going to post more details about that um, by the end of the week. But right now, I'm planning to just do it similar to how your other tests have been, um, where I, I post it, um, you have some time to work on it, you scan it, you upload it. Um, that way, we don't have to worry about new technology and running into technological issues and cameras and all that good stuff. Um, there will be multiple versions of the final, though, so that's the only thing I'll tell you is be careful because um, I know some of you might have been working together on tests and things like that, and, you know, there's nothing I can do to stop that, um, but for the final exam, there will be multiple versions out there, so, you know, you're not going to be as able to, you know, just work together and, and copy stuff, so um, just be aware of that, but that's the plan right now for the final. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, because I know I might have said this to some students, it's not in the syllabus. But in semesters past, I have dropped grades. Because nothing is going to be proctored this semester, though, um, and you've been able to kind of use whatever resources for the last two tests, um, the plan is to not drop anything. So just know, you're, you know I want you to do your best on that final exam. Again, it's not going to be proctored. You're going to have resources available, open note, open book, all that stuff. Um, so that's why I've decided I'm just not going to drop any grades this semester. Um, but hopefully your exam grades will be better, you know, with all the resources that you have available. Okay. Um, but again, I'll post more details about that uh, by tomorrow um, so that you kind of have an idea of what's expected. But again, there will be multiple versions of the final, but it'll be similar in terms of printing it out or just, you know, writing it on notebook paper, scanning your answers, um, and then uploading those to Blackboard for me to grade. Okay. Any questions, though, on anything right now? All right, so let's take a look at example seven then. So yesterday, we started looking at this problem, right? And I said, the first thing we always wanna do is define our variables, right? So figure out what's the question asking for, figure out what variables we can use. So in this case, we're looking for the speed of the current and we're looking for the speed of the woman rowing. And so we let C be the current speed and then R be the rowing speed. And we started setting up these equations, okay? And again, we use the rate times time equals distance formula here. Our rate when we're going upstream, right, and the current is hurting us, okay, we had to do R minus C because it's going to slow her down. And then when we went downstream and the current is helping us, then we did R plus C because that's actually, you know, the current is helping us, speeding us up there. Then we multiply by our times. Since the time in the first case was in hours, like five hours, we also converted that 45 minutes to hours and got 0.75 or three-fourths of an hour. But in both cases, the distance was going to be four, right? Because each of these, we were going four miles one direction and then four miles back the other direction. So that's how we got the system of equations here. Now we've just got to figure out how we're going to solve it. So what do you think we might need to do first here if we're going to solve that system of equations? Okay, good. We need to distribute, right? So the next step here is to distribute in both of these. So I'm gonna distribute the 1.5 to both of my terms, which will give us 1.5R minus 1.5C equals four. And then the bottom equation, I'm distributing the 0.75. So that'll be 0.75R plus 0.75C equals four. <clears throat> okay. Now we have options, right? So we can solve this using any of the methods we talked about. So which method would you like to use here? Okay, so graphing's fine. So if we do graphing here, um, 
which variable, because the thing is we have an R and a C, right, instead of an X and a Y, um, it really doesn't matter which one you call your X and your Y, your horizontal and vertical. Um, so which variable do you want to solve for, for both of these? R, okay. So let's take the first one here. So we have 1.5 R minus 1.5 C equals 4. And so if we solve for R, we're going to have to move the C term to the other side, which means we're going to have to add it. So we're going to get 1.5 R equals 1.5 C plus 4. And again, this is only if you're going to graph it in your calculator, right? You would have to solve for a variable. Um, if you wanted to put this in Desmos, you could actually put it in just like that. You're just going to have to use X's and Y's instead of R's and C's, okay? Right, but now we can divide by 1.5. And again, when we do that, make sure you're dividing every single term here by the 1.5. That's going to give us R equals, well, the 1.5s here are going to cancel out, so that just gives us C. And then what's 4 divided by 1.5? Yeah, so it's 2.6 repeating, right? Um, or if you want an exact value there, it's actually going to be the fraction 8 thirds, right? 2 and 2 thirds or 8 thirds. Okay, so I would probably leave it like that just to make sure that we're getting an accurate answer when we go to find that point of intersection. Any questions on solving that equation for R? Okay, so now we need to take the second equation, do the same thing. We've got our 0.75R plus 0.75C equals 4. We need to solve that one for R also. So this time we're going to subtract the 0.75C to move it to the other side. So that's going to be 0.75R equals negative 0.75C plus 4. So this time we're going to divide by 0.75. Again, divide every single term when you do that. Now we have R equals. This time we have a negative 0.75 divided by 0.75. So that's going to give us a negative C. And then what's 4 divided by 0.75? Good. So 16 over 3, right, that would be 5.3 repeating as the decimal. But again, just in terms of our graphing, let's keep it as a fraction so we have an exact value there. All right, so once we've done that, now we can go to our graphing calculator and we can put those in there. Again, you're going to have to use X instead of C. So go to your Y equals. I'll put this in Desmos. So there's my Desmos graph. So hopefully you got something that looks similar to that on your calculator. <clears throat> All right, so now what do we have to find? Good, the point of intersection. Okay, so again, on your calculator, the way you're going to do that is second trace. You're going to go down to intersection, and then you're going to hit enter three times, right? Because it's going to ask for a first curve, a second curve, and then the guess. Um, so hitting enter three times after you do that should give you that point. So what do we get as the point of intersection if we do that? Okay, good. So 1.3 repeating and then 4 for the y value. So our point here is 1.3 repeating. Four. So now, because we have a contextual problem, we need to go back and think about what do these values represent, right, and what's our actual answer. So we were asked to find how fast does she row relative to the water and at what speed is the current flowing. 
So now we just got to figure out well, what's what. So what is the 1.3 repeating going to represent and what is the 4 going to represent? Okay, good. So this value, this 1.3 repeating, that's actually the C value. And then the four in this case is going to be the R. Because remember, when we solve these, we thought of the R as like the Y. And then the C was like the X. So in this case, that first value gives us the C. And that second value gives us the R. So now when we come back up here, we can say, well, I'm just going to erase this well I can't do that sorry I'll do it over here so the 1.3 repeating then is going to be in what units good miles per hour right because our distance was in miles our time was in hours we found a speed so that speed is going to be in miles per hour and that right there is the C value, which was the speed of the current, right? And so that's why it's important to find those variables up front. So now we know the speed of our current is going to be 1.3 miles per hour. And then the R value, which was our rowing speed, is going to be what? Four miles per hour. Good. So she's rowing at four miles per hour. The current is either helping her or hurting her at 1.3 miles per hour, depending on which direction she's going. But those were the two things we were asked to find there. Any questions on any of that work now? Now, just know, oh, sorry, let me go back to my notes. I forgot the graph was up there. There you go. Okay, so <clears throat> notice I just put over here the C equals 1.3 miles per hour, the R equals 4 miles per hour. That is the actual answer I'm looking for. So always go back, think about your units, especially in these contextual problems, okay, and just make sure you um, list out what those two things are. But again, as long as you define your variables up front, then I know that C represents the speed of the current. I know that R represents the rolling speed, so you don't have to put that over there in the final answer. Now, did we have to do the graphing? No, right? Okay, so on a problem like this, especially the word problems, what I'm going to be looking for is did you set up the system correctly, right? So define your variables, set up your equations, and then you can use whatever method you want, okay? So I'm never going to tell you specifically you have to use elimination on this word problem or you have to use graphing on this word problem. There will be some non-contextual problems where I do say, use elimination, use graphing, use substitution, right? But in this case with a word problem, whatever method you want, once you get it set up, that's fine. Okay. Anybody need more time on that one now? All right. Ten point two. All right, so now we're going to look at systems of linear equations and several variables, right? So ten point one was all about two variables. Now we're going to look at even more, right? So most of these are going to be three. Um, we might get to some that have four. But in general, just know the I think the most I ever give on a test or an exam is three anyway. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to focus on for today. All right, so here we go. So here's our first system. OK, so notice here we've got three different equations this time because we have three variables X, Y and Z. And we want to solve for all three of the variables. All right. 
So if we look at this system now, <clears throat> notice that last equation, it's already solved, right? Okay, so this first example here is just trying to show us what we're going to end up doing in all of these. Once we can solve for one of our variables, then we can start back substituting. So looking at the value of z now, which variable could I call for by taking that z value and substituting into one of my other equations? Okay, we could solve the second one, right, and figure out what y is. So I'm going to take that z value of 3. I'm going to plug it into that second equation there. That's going to give me y plus 2 times 3 should be equal to 5. Now, once I do that, I can simplify. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then to get y by itself, we're just going to move the 6 to the other side. And so that's going to give us y equals negative 1. Any questions on how we did that? All right, so now that we know Z and we know Y, now what can we do? Good, we can take both of those values, we can plug them into the first equation, and that's how we're going for our X value. So we're gonna say X minus two times the Y value, which we just solved, we got negative one, minus the Z value, which is three, should be equal to one. Yeah, now it's just a matter of simplifying, combining like terms. So we're going to have x. We have a minus 2 and a negative 1. So when we multiply those, that's going to become positive 2. Minus 3 equals 1. Combine your 2 and your minus 3. It's going to give us x minus 1 equals 1. And then finally, we can add the 1 to the other side. And that should give us x equals 2. <clears throat> Any questions on solving for x there? Once we have those values, just before we have the x and y values, we put those in the third pair. Now we have three different values. So we're going to call an ordered triple. Okay, so instead of an ordered pair, there's three values, so ordered triple. And we want to put them in alphabetical order. So in this case, the x value is going to come first, so that's our 2. y value is going to come second, that's our negative 1. And then finally, the z value is going to go last, that's the 3. And so our final answer for this one is going to look like that. Any questions on example 1? Now, obviously not all of our systems are going to be that basic, right? We're not already going to know the value of one of our variables to be able to just substitute and find the values of the others. Okay, so there is going to be some work involved, and that's what we're going to look at next. <clears throat> all right, so operations that yield equivalent systems. Okay, so this is what we call Gaussian elimination. Don't worry about the terminology so much. But these are the three things we're allowed to do to any system. So we can add a non-zero multiple of one equation to another. Same thing we did with elimination, right? We're allowed to multiply an equation by something, and then we can add two equations together. That still applies. Okay, number two says we can multiply an equation by a non-zero constant. That's what we just said, right? We're allowed to multiply it and then add. And then three, interchange the position of two equations. So in some cases, right, you might just say, well, I'd really like, rather have that third equation in the second slot, or I'd rather have this one in the third slot, right? You're allowed to move those equations around. They're not in fixed positions, okay? So that's all that tells us. Okay, but again, really, the elimination is the thing we're trying to think about here. Um, but we're only going to work with pairs of equations at a time, never all three at the same time. Okay? So let's take a look at example two now. Thank you. 
So when we see a system like this now, right, we don't have a variable that's already solved for, so we can't just start back substituting yet. So what we've got to do is we've got to try to solve for one of our variables, and then we can start that back substitution process to figure out the values of the others. We're going to always use elimination, okay? So whenever you've got three variables like this, um, substitution is not really going to work so well. You can use it, um, but it actually gets really cumbersome just because, you know, you're substituting so much stuff in there and then having to resubstitute other stuff in there in place of it. Um, so to me, the substitution, it just gets really clunky. Um, so elimination is going to be our best bet, and that's what we're always going to do. So what we want to start with is pick two equations, and we're just going to try to eliminate one of our variables. And it doesn't matter which two you choose first, and it doesn't matter which variable you eliminate first. Okay, so let's just pick and eliminate a variable. So which two do you want to work with, and which variable do you want to eliminate? Okay, eliminate y and which two equations. Okay, first two, good, okay? So let's take the first two equations here. So x minus 2y plus 3z equals 1. And the second equation, x plus 2y minus z equals 13. In this case, we already have a negative 2y and a positive 2y. Adding these equations there will cancel out automatically, right? So I'm just going to add them together. If that's not the case, remember, you can always multiply one or both equations by something to make them eliminate. In this case, we already have them lined up nicely. So when I add this together, I get 2x. My y's are going to cancel. I have a 3z minus z. That's going to be plus 2z. And then 1 plus 13 plus 14. All right, so now I have an equation that's just in terms of x and z. My next step is always going to be to choose two other equations and try to eliminate the same variable that I just did. I can't work with the same two because I'm going to get the exact same thing, right? So I've got to pick a different pair of equations now and try to eliminate the same variable. So which equations do you want to work with next? Okay, so we could do two and three, right? So if you do two and three here, that would be x plus 2y minus z equals 13. And then we could do 3x plus 2y minus 5z equals 3. <clears throat> now, which variable do we need to eliminate? We've got to eliminate y because that's the variable we eliminated the first time. Okay, so always choose the same variable to eliminate. What are we going to have to do this time if we want to eliminate the y, though? Yeah, we're going to have to multiply one of our equations by a negative one, right? And it doesn't matter which one, right? I'll just multiply the bottom one. And so when we do that now, keep the equation. So x plus 2y minus z equals 13. That doesn't change. Now I'm going to distribute that negative one. That gives me negative 3x. We get a negative 2y, a positive 5z, and then a negative 3. Now, just so you know, we could have also just chosen equations 1 and 3 because that's a different pairing, and then our y's would have automatically canceled out again, right? So without even multiplying by anything. But in this case, if you choose 2 and 3, that's fine, right? You just have to multiply by the negative 1 so that the y's cancel out. Now we can add. So when I add these together, add the x's. x plus a negative 3x, that should be negative 2x. We have a 2y and a negative 2y, that's going to cancel. Negative z plus 5z should be positive 4z. And then 13 plus negative 3 should give us positive 10. Any questions on that stuff? Okay. Once we've done that, now we have two equations that are in terms of X and Z. So now we can pair those equations together to try to eliminate another variable. So if we do that, right, I'm just going to write them over here. So we have our 2x 
plus 2z equals 14. And now we have our negative 2x plus 4z equals 10. So which variable do you want to eliminate next? X, right? That makes the most sense. We have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. So we can just go ahead and add these together without having to multiply by anything. X is cancel. Add the z's. 2z plus 4z is going to be 6z. 14 plus 10 is going to be 24. And now what can we do? Yeah, we can just divide by 6 and get our z by itself. So what's our z value going to be this time? Good. So z, oops, sorry. Should be equal to 4. Okay. Now, once we've done that, what do you think we can do next? Yeah, and we've got two different equations that we can plug into, right? We have the negative 2x plus 4z equals 10, or the 2x plus 2z equals 14. It does not matter which one of those we choose, because if we plug that z value in, we can solve for x, okay? And both of those equations should give you the exact same x value regardless, so it does not matter. So I'm just going to go with this second one that we did down here. So it's going to be negative 2x plus 4 times z, which is now 4, is 10. So then when we solve that, we get negative 2x. 4 times 4 is 16, equals 10. Now it's just a matter of solving for x, so we move the 16 to the other side. Sorry, we'll move it to the side so it doesn't run off the screen there. So we get negative 2x equals negative 6. And then when I divide by the negative 2, should get x equals positive 3. Any questions on that part? Again, if you had plugged the z into that other 2x plus 2z equals 14 equation, you're going to get exactly the same x value. Now, once we have that information, now what can we do? Now we can solve for y, right? We have an x and we have a z. So does it matter which equation we choose? It does not. Okay, you have three options at the top there. You can plug in the z and x values for any of those three, and they're all going to give you the same y value. So which one do you want to use? Second one, okay. So with that, uh, let's see. I'm trying to find the best place to do this work. I'm going to do it down here in this corner. Okay, so we're going to do x. Oh, I'm sorry. X is 3, right? So we can plug that in. Plus 2y. So that's what we're trying to solve for, minus the z value, which is 4, and that should be equal to 13 now. All right, <clears throat> so if we like terms here, it's going to give us 3 minus 4 is going to be a negative 1, so 2y minus 1 equals 13. We can add the one to the other side, so 2y equals 14. And then if we divide both sides by the 2, we should get y equals positive 7. Any questions on that? Okay. So now, how are we going to write our answer? So, 
triple, alphabetical order, right? So X is three, that comes first. Y is seven, that's gonna come second. And then finally we have the Z value, which is four, that's gonna be last. So this right here is our final answer, three, seven, four. So again, just to kind of reiterate the steps here, pick a pair of equations, eliminate a variable. Then choose a different pair of equations and eliminate the same variable. Once you've done that, you'll have two equations that have the same two variables in them, and then you can use elimination one more time to get one of your variables by itself. And then from there, once you have one variable solved, then it's just a matter of back substituting into the other equations, and you can solve for the other two variables. The, the main mistake I see people make is they eliminate on the first step and then they eliminate a different variable on that second step and it's not going to work, right? So just make sure that when you pick up equations and eliminate a variable, choose a different pair of equations, but eliminate the same variable that you did the first time. Anybody need more time on that one now? Right. Now, this is just kind of graphically showing you what's going on in these situations, right? I'm never going to ask you, obviously, to graph these or anything like that. Okay? But for the solutions to a system of linear equations in three variables, we have one of these three options. Okay, So either the system have, it has exact solution. That's what we've looked at on the first two examples. We could also have no solution, okay, meaning that there is no point of intersection. Or we could have infinitely many solutions, which means basically they overlap in a straight line, kind of like we did in the first section, even in two variables, right? So now you can see graphically what those situations would look like. So the first one here, because we're in three dimensions now, all of these equations that we're looking at are actually planes. Okay? And so you have to think of the, these as the intersection of planes in 3D space. So the red, the blue, and the yellow now could intersect at a single point, and that's going to be our solution. We could also have part B, right, number two, in the, or sorry, this would be number three, um, where the three planes intersect and form a straight line. And so this line right in the middle here is going to be our solution, and there are infinitely many of those solutions. Or we get a situation like part C down here where there is no solution because all three planes never intersect at the same place. Okay, so that's the key is that all three have to intersect at some place to have a solution. And in this case, even though pairs of them intersect, never do all three of them intersect at the same time. And so that's why there's no solution to that one. But again, the three options are the same as if we had two variables. You're either going to have one solution that's an order triple, you're going to have no solution, or you're going to have any solutions. And so let's take a look at this one now. All right, so I'm going to go through that same process we did on the last example. So what do you want to do first here? Okay, so... All right, so you want to work with equations one and two, and which variable do you want to eliminate using equations one and two? Okay, so let's take the first two equations here. We have x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1, and we have 2x plus 2y 
minus z equals 6. Okay, so what are we going to have to do this time to eliminate the y then? Okay, so we're going to have to multiply by negative 1. Again, it doesn't matter which one, so I'll just multiply the bottom one here. If I do that, keep the top equation the same. So x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. Bottom equation becomes negative 2x minus 2y plus z equals negative 6. And so now when we add those together, x and negative 2x is going to be negative x. 2y and negative 2y is going to cancel. Negative 2z and positive z is going to be minus z. And then 1, negative 6 should be negative 5. All right, so we eliminated our y from the first, or using the first two equations, right? So now what pair of equations do you want to use? First and third, okay, so if we use the first and the third, x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. Third equation is 3x plus 4y minus 3z equals 5. All right, so which variable do we need to eliminate? Good. Always eliminate the same variable we did the first time, so we need to eliminate y. What are we going to have to do to eliminate y this time? Good. We're going to have to multiply the top equation here by negative 2 so that the y's cancel out. When I do that, I'm going to get negative 2x. We get negative 4y, positive 4z, and equals negative 2. Keep the second equation the same. And now we should be able to add these together to eliminate the y. So we have negative 2x plus 3x. It's going to be x. The y's are going to cancel. 4z plus negative 3z is positive z. Negative 2 plus 5 should give us positive 3. Any questions on the step now? All right, so now what's our next step going to be? Okay, so we want to put these two equations down here that we just solved, right, put those together. So that's going to give us negative x oops, minus z equals negative 5. And then x plus z equals 3. And so then we need to eliminate a variable, right? Well, in this case, it really doesn't matter. They're already lined up. And when I add these together, what's going to happen? Yeah, all the variables cancel out, and I just get 0 on the left. And then negative 5 plus 3 is going to give us negative 2. What does that mean? solution. Good. So just like in the last section, if all of your variables cancel out and you get a statement that is not true, right, zero is not equal to negative two, at that point we can just say there is no solution to that system and we're done, right? And so these actually become shorter than all the other ones because now there is no back substituting because we can't actually solve for a variable. So you just stop right there and say no solution. Any questions on that one? All 
All right. Go ahead and get this one down. We'll work through it using the same method. All right, so which pair of equations do you want to work with and which variable do you want to eliminate? Okay, eliminate y using 1 and 2. Good. All right, so we'll do x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. Take our second equation, 2x plus y plus 4z equals 2. In this case, we already have a negative y and a positive y, so nothing needs to be multiplied. We can just go ahead and add them together. We have x and 2x, which would be 3x. Y's are going to cancel. 5z plus 4z plus 9z. We have our negative 2 and our positive 2, so that's going to give us 0 on that side. And so we eliminated y. So now what? Okay. So eliminate y again, and this time 1 and 3. That works. Okay. So we'll take equation 1. So x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. On equation here, 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 8. All right, so what are we going to have to do this time? Okay, good. Multiply the first equation by 4 because we need to eliminate that y. So if I do that, we're going to get 4x minus 4y plus 20z equals negative 8. Keep the bottom equation, 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 8. Now we can eliminate the y, so add those together. We're going to get 6x, y's cancel, 20z plus negative 2z, so that's 18z, and then negative 8 plus 8 is going to give us 0. Right. Now we can pair those together, right? So make my 3x plus 9z equals 0. I'm going to pair it with the 6x plus 18z equals 0. So now if we want to use elimination again, what are we going to have to do this time? Go ahead and multiply by negative 2, right? So I'll take the top equation here, multiply it by negative 2. That's going to give us negative 6x minus 18z. Negative 2 times 0 is still 0, though, right? So we're still going to have 0 on the right. Bottom equation stays the same. 6x plus 18z equals 0. Now we can add. And when we do that, what are we going to get? 0 equals 0, right? Because all of our variables cancel, but we still have 0 on the right-hand side. So what does that tell us now? Good. So this time, there's going to be infinitely many solutions. Okay. 
Again, if you ever get a true statement there and all of your variables cancel out, just remember that's always going to be infinitely many solutions. Any questions on that one? I think that's where I want to stop. Yeah, because I want to make sure we have plenty of time to set that one up. Okay, so we'll stop there for today um, rather than trying to rush through the next one in the four minutes we have left. Um, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll hang out for a few more minutes, um, so feel free to ask. Uh, but otherwise, have a good afternoon. Again, test due Monday by midnight. So, um, you've got the weekend to get that done. Um, I'll post more details about the final exam. Uh, but if you do have any questions about any of that stuff, just let me know. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good afternoon.